Um, okay, you guys both played under Coach Cody May and now Coach Magaha. Best with the aux cord. I'm gonna say myself. Okay. D. You agree with that? White on white. White on white. Okay. Yeah. I'll go white on white as well. So all the home unis. All the home that's unis. what you, yeah. I would say I used to be very nervous for it, but now I just don't think about it and just catch a pop fly. Running out to center and jumping and hitting the wall. Definitely. Definitely running out there and then saying our team prayer in the middle and just getting pumped up in a circle before the game and then doing our stretches. Just awesome. All right. First question of the night. Growing up, who was the caveman baseball player that you looked up to or multiple players that you looked up to? We'll start with you, Del Monaco. I'm going to have to say uh, Trevor Rogers, Eric Hernandez, Nate Arrington. Basically like that whole uh, 2016 caveman baseball team that won state that year. Okay. It's just Very awesome cool. looking up to them. And you, all, yeah. Did you go to all the games? I well, I tried definitely, and I was also on the bus ride back, like waiting for them when they won state coming. Oh, in. really? Yeah, I remember we were waiting cool. for them. You so went back. You went with your parents and just hung out. No, we actually were like waiting by the Artesian Highway, like, like waiting for them when they come back in. Oh, that's really that's cool. Okay, Hazen, what about you? My two favorite players were Trevor Rogers and Devin Ortiz. Okay, very cool. And why? Why for you guys? Like you said, the state champion was it just because that team was just special to you um i would say special yeah and also like go, growing up and going to the cayman baseball camps they'd always be around and it was just also always awesome seeing them like at the camps and all that and te sure. them teaching us ways it's pretty nice it's crazy because i'm thinking about 2000 you said 16 16 it was and like, i'm like oh that was the other but it was what that's eight years ago that's crazy like 10 so you nine, were how old 10 years old 10 years old wow yeah. okay and then what about for you trevor and Devin, Trevor, I've always like looked up to him because he's always been a pitcher, and I like always been into pitching. So he's just been someone to look up to. And then Devin, he dated my aunt when I was younger, so that's the reason I knew him. Oh, okay. So you just go watch his games. Mm -hmm. You're paying more attention. Very cool. Yes, awesome. What's up, guys? You are here on the All Sports Best podcast. I'm Trey Gonzalez, your host. Today we have two very special guests on: uh, catcher Delmonico Granger Moreno, um, senior. And then senior pitcher and first baseman, Hazen Wright. So thank you guys for being on. Appreciate you guys. Of course. Um, all right. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Lucky Bull Grill right here in Carlsbad, New Mexico. Go and check them out for um, amazing food all throughout your week, Monday through Saturday, open from 11 to 9 p.m. All right, guys. Um, we'll start it open with Delmonico. One of the things that I've noticed when I get a chance to broadcast your games is that you, last year and this year, take a lot of pride in seeing the ball. You are big on um, getting walks, getting hit by pitches. Um, I think last year, between you and Zach Galindo, you had about 50, right? Um, which was awesome. It's, it's great to see. How do you factor that in? Like, do you go up to the plate knowing I'm going to be on the plate crowding it? Or is it there's something about the way you, you present yourself that somehow you get hit? How does that work? Definitely. I, I mean, I go up with confidence, of course. So I get in the plate. I try to get on the plate. And I just try not to be selfish. I swing at the right pitches when I have to make sure the swing at the pitches that I can drive. And if they're not drivable, I usually like to take. And I'll, I'll take my walks and hit my pitches any day, anything to get on base and yeah. help the team score. So that, yeah, that is something that I've definitely seen throughout. I think I got a chance to watch you um, eighth grade, ninth grade a little bit and just seeing that that was something that yeah. I definitely noticed. And you guys both had a chance to play for Shorthorn at yeah. the uh, regional level, yes. right? Yes, sir. So that was something you guys were both pretty much on fire. I mean, the whole team was, right? So yeah. can you guys speak to that experience as well, the Shorthorn experience at, at regionals in Waco? You want to start? Um, it was probably one of the funnest times of my life. Just going up there, being 12 years old, getting to go into your own hotel room without no parents, mm. um, getting to play on ESPN in front of the whole thing, in front of the whole crowd. Just whenever you're younger, that's one thing that you looked up to going sure. into state. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, definitely. When when we won and we knew that we were going to Waco, we were all excited to play on TV. And like when we got there, we just had like a big parade. We met teams from, like, Louisiana and Oklahoma. We also made, like, friends, and we still follow them on Instagram to this day. Okay. And, like, actually one of them is committed to LSU, and he's going to go play there. He's, like, ranked number one in the class of 2024. Really? Like, Landon Victorian or something. Holy he's a right-handed pitcher. And you said from where? Louisiana? Louisiana. Oh, okay. They go to Barb, cool. Barb High School. 
Wow, well, that's just, really cool. It was just awesome experience up there. Definitely the funnest time. Ever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was really cool to see you guys do your thing too. Um, all right. So Hazen, you left for a period of time. Could you tell me like what happened, when it was, and then like what happened there? I moved my freshman year when COVID started. Okay. Because I wasn't too good on online schooling, and so I moved up there because they were going in person. Oh. Okay. And I just mainly went up there to play baseball and go in person school. What was the like competition like when you went over there? It wasn't really like nothing like here because it was a little two A school. Okay. So it wasn't nothing compared to Carlsbad. I think because I remember you being here, um, and then you left. When you came back, I think you were seven foot five. No, I'm just kidding, <laughs> but you were huge. I was like, whoa, this guy like went somewhere to just grow, like in a lab or something like that. But how? I mean, how much taller did you get from? Your eighth grade to tenth grade year, it had to be pretty substantial. I think it was like a foot, foot. And really, a, a whole foot yes, in one sir. year. That is wild. Okay. Um, all right, D. You played. You signed to play college ball um, yes. at the University of the Southwest. Yes. What went into that decision, and why was that a fit for you? Uh, I believe that was the best fit for me because I went there in October to inter squad with them, and when inter squad, I did really well. I think I went three for four with two doubles inter squad. And then after that, I toured it, and it just felt comfortable. Everything just felt right. And you know when something feels right, that's the spot. So sure. Definitely. Do you, are you um, also pretty excited to be able to be close to home, have that family support as well? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I love my family. So. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. We've got, I think there's at least two cavemen that are there right now. Yes. Oh, uh, we, TJ Ruiz and Jeffrey Mathis. Also, Jeffrey is a big part of why I'm there as well. He definitely talked to the coach a lot about me. Oh, very yeah. cool. And also in the inner squad, I hit a double off Jeffrey. So Oh, right. so he contributed in that yeah. way, huh? Shout yeah. out Jeffrey. Shout out Jeffrey. <laughs> very cool. Um, he was just doing that because he was being nice. That's what uh, I That's hear. what he said. That's what he, <laughs> that's said. What he said. All right, Hazen, Galveston College. So how did you um, decide to sign with Galveston College and like also what went into that? So I went up there with one of my friends from Midland. I played with him in summer ball. And we were both touring the school. And it felt just like, felt like home, honestly. It just felt good to both of us. And I committed, and then a week later, he committed. Oh, cool. Yes, sir. And then it was just like the facilities real nice, being next to the ocean's nice, and then the dorms that we're staying in is really nice. Okay, so you've got a, a place that you feel at home when you went, and if I'm not mistaken, there is a, also a cave girl that with Jesse, there, right? Jessica, Jesse Monroe or Jesse? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very cool. Awesome. So did you, did you talk to her about it? Ask her how her experience was? No, no sir. Didn't, didn't even talk to her mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> very cool. Awesome. Um, all right. So tell me both of you guys had really good summers, right? And I think you both played for an Albuquerque team or in Albuquerque. Yeah. So tell me about your summer ball experience. Um, was it a lot of traveling or was, were you guys living like away from home? So yeah, basically we, we played on the same team in the ABA. Okay. And we just basically lived in Albuquerque all summer. Usually, we usually stay there maybe eight times, eight times, like throughout the whole summer. And then we also go to we went to Oklahoma and Arizona, and those are just amazing tournaments. And just it was just fun hanging out every day with each other and playing baseball. Sure. Was what was your experience like? Because you guys had the same team, but you were focusing mostly on I was pitching. A you were a PO. Was a okay, PO what was that experience like? Because that's different, right? <laughs> yes, sir. It was pretty good. We would play like a, we would start a tournament on like a Tuesday and it would end on a Sunday. And I would pitch that Tuesday, go home, and then come back up on Saturday to throw a Sunday. Mm. So it was really, I didn't have to stay as much as D did, but I stayed there quite a bit. And did you catch purely? Oh, yes. I we So there was two catchers, and we switched every game catching, which was pretty nice. So I'd catch one game and DH the next game. So you, did you guys have off days on, like, similar? Oh, you DH. So DH. you weren't even off then. No, you so I couldn't playing. go home. I had to stay there the whole Tuesday through Saturday. And, like, if we'd make it to the championship, then we'd tired. So I just wanted to go home some days, but it was worth it, definitely. Yeah. And what's cool about that was we got to kind of keep up with you guys because on Twitter they updated it fairly well. Yeah. So I was seeing a lot of the stuff. I heard a lot of good things. There's a coach that is a part of ABA, Coach Tim Campos, mm -hmm. that you guys probably both know. And they had a lot of good things to say about you just kind of checking in and seeing what you guys were doing. So um, that's awesome to see what you guys did. And then you guys 
and eventually ended up signing, which yeah. is awesome too. Um, okay, you guys both played under Coach Cody May and now Coach Magaha. Um, so can you tell me some of the sim- – is there any similarities between the two and then maybe obviously the differences? Similarities, I say both have the same mindset. Both obviously want to get back to the state championship. Both great coaches. Both have been in the spot of the state championships before. So definitely some similarities there. So you feel a sense of trust as a player to, oh, yeah. to play De- for both? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. What about you, Hazen? I feel the same way D does. They both have a vision for the end. Like, it's nothing different than any other coaches I've ever played for. Okay. What about differences? Is there a difference in, like, intensity or styles, anything like that? Mm. Not really? Nah, I mean, not really. Not really. At the end of the day, it's baseball, but maybe practices are a little bit different. Like, just some different things we do throughout, like, different hitting. I say that. Like, we do a lot of different hitting things this year. Sure. Yeah. Uh, a lot of curveball machine, a lot of T work, and we don't get you don't want to give too much away though, right? Too much away. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so um, I wanted to do a game with you guys. Um, basically, what, what we're gonna do is all say um, like a trait, and you're gonna say who that person is on your team. You guys can agree or disagree, but I just kind of was interested to see how you guys answer these. You guys ready for this? Okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, we'll go D, and then we'll go. Um, Hazen, okay. okay. So first one, most likely to have your back on the team. Have my back. Definitely. Aiden. Okay. Aiden, Aiden. always going to have my back. I'd say the same. You agree? Okay. And, well, yeah, let's go ahead and most likely to be late. <laughs> go first. <laughs> Hazen? Hunter Dowdy. Hazen and Hunter Dowdy. Okay. Hunter Dowdy, Hazen. Okay. Um, best with the aux cord? I'm going to say myself. Okay. D. You agree with that? Um, worst with the aux cord? Probably, probably have to go Jace Hernandez. <laughs> really? Yeah, Jace. Jace or Gus? What is he? What, is, what are they rocking? What are they listening like, to? Gus, Gus listens to a lot of, like his walk up songs, like a heavy rock metal song. I mean, people like it, but it's just not the style right now. Okay. Yeah. It's just and not the bus thing. before a game, like, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, most athletic? Aiden. Aiden? Aiden okay. Yeah, Aiden. Um, most likely to forget their uniform. Hunter Dowdy. Hunter Dowdy. <laughs> actually, we have we act, actually just happened this past weekend. In oh, really? Our, our so. first game. Um, most likely to make it to the MLB. It's a Hazen. Yeah. Hazen and Aiden. Very Aiden. cool. Awesome. Very good. All right. So um, I had other questions that I just I had a chance to play baseball in the same program with the Cavemen, and there's a lot of things that we really love about baseball you take pride in and all that stuff but there's also stuff that you just never forget and one of the things that like when I think of caveman baseball it's not there anymore but I'll tell you what that is here in a second but what is the first smell that you think of when you think of baseball freshly cut grass okay definitely cut grass and concession stand smell Okay, because that's exactly what I was going to say. That's one of the things I always remembered about the caveman field, but now you guys don't have grass. So you guys freshly smelling turf or what? <laughs> when they go and drag the field. Drag the field. Actually, yeah, when it, it smells pretty nice. nice. Oh, really? What is yeah. it? It's like, it just like, like just smell clean out there. It's really good. Okay, yeah. interesting. All right. Um, all right. Your walkout song, what is it? It's buzzing. Uh, okay. I believe it goes. Yeah, I, I just picked that one because I like the B and... It says that I feel like money, and my nickname was D Money, like when I was little. That's so right. Okay. I thought it'd just be cool. For it's pretty year. groovy. Groovy. It's yeah. like really chill, and people can get behind it. Oh yeah. Do you, you want to bu- you want to perform it for it? No, I'm just. Nah, kidding. I don't want to. Hey, Jason, what shot. about you? Uh, rookie of the year. Okay, and why? Like, why did you choose that? Because that one goes a little hard. <laughs> I honestly, it was just I had the radio playing my music, and I just heard that song, and it just like felt felt like it was fitting to me. Okay. Very cool. Um. Best uniform in the caveman rotation this year? Just go ahead. White on white. White on white. Okay. Yeah. I'll go white on white as well. So all the home unis. All the home that's unis. That's what you, yeah. Also, okay. gray on gray is pretty clean too. Or gray on blue. I what's like gray the, on blue. What's the vibe on the black unis this year? Because that's brand new. Yeah. I don't think that's ever been done in the program. I, I like it so far. I mean, black, look, we look tough, mean. It's a good look. I like it. No complaints on the blacks. It's off and on. It really just depends. Okay. Yeah. I think they're pretty sweet. I think they're, they're cool. Sweet, yeah. Just because you guys can say, I was the first one to ever wear black. Yeah, like, exactly. Mm-hmm. Never been done. Yep. Um, all right. So 
I wanted to ask you guys about something that you guys use to complement your uniforms. I did a clip interview with you earlier this year for social media and just caked with the eye black. Tell yeah. me, how did that start? Because that's this year's thing? No, we no, it's been before. Yeah. It's been last year, even even the state, year, just even 2022 year, year. Okay, so do you know how that started? And then uh, my explanation from other players is drip. Drip, definitely drip. Okay. drip. Definitely yeah. drip. So explain to the people that are my age or above, what is drip? Drip is basically just looking good, like styling, stylish, just drip. Okay. Yeah. Just looking good. Wanted right. to look good. Sure. Mm. Okay. Um, so where did the eye black start? Do you know? I have no clue, actually. Yeah, there's no. I, I, we've always worn it, even when we were little. Okay. Actually. Like, so, and what's what's the pregame looking like? You guys are all just hanging out in front of the mirror, just knocking pretty much it out? We have, uh, we have Nick Sendate, Nick Sendate. put it on, on all of us oh, every really? single game. He's the good luck charm. Uh, like last year, Renee Ramos would put it on all of us. Okay. This year, Nick stepped in. Took It's a big role. Because <laughs> it's, it's a lot of players doing yeah. it. Like I saw, I think I, th I want to say the Caveman Classic Championship. There was like all but like maybe two or three players. Yeah. That what goes into the people that don't wear it? Do you guys give them a hard time, or it's just whatever you want to do? We give them a hard time just because they're different. Like they just don't want to do it. But most of them, they say like they don't like the way eye black looks at night. Oh, yeah, okay. True. So that's their that's their thing. Okay. But during the day, everybody does it. Yeah. During the day, mostly. Usually. Okay. And usually cool. sometimes, like, pitchers won't wear it. The yeah. starting pitchers won't wear it. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. Well, that's pretty uh, cool information. Nick yeah. Sandate is the, is the makeup artist for yep. the team. Very cool. Um, all right. So best cleats of all time. What do you guys have? I got the trouts. Okay. Is that what you guys are – is that what you're wearing yes, this year? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to have to go with, like, any low uh, – low Adidas, the low top. Okay, the like is the is it the newest trouts that you have? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then for the Adidas, what is it like? Addy zeros? Yeah, Addy zeros. There you go. Okay, like Very colorful cool. ones. I like color. So like the drip, the the dipped ones. Dip ones okay. like lime green and. Pink. And their drip, is yeah. what I'm hearing. <laughs> drip. Okay. Um, all right. So the next thing is, um, yeah, it was actually about drip again. But here we we're gonna move into a segment that we call rapid fire. You guys ready for this? Let's do it. You yeah. think so? <laughs> All right, we'll start with you, Hazen, then D. Okay. Uh, best dugout gum? Big League Chew. What flavor? The uh, grape. Okay. Big League Chew, I like uh, sour apple. Okay, very good. Both both good tastes. Uh, best seed flavor? Dill pickle. Takis. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't think I've I even like, seen that. I like the Taki seed flavor. Uh, best shades? I know you guys both wear shades. Oakley Sutros. Okay. Oakley Sutros or 100% Oakley, 100% uh, glasses. Oh, okay, then that's the brand. Yeah, it's just yeah. 100%. Favorite player in the league right now? Marcus Stroman. Aaron Judge, probably. Okay, so, and both Yankees. Yankees. Yes, sir. Are you guys both Yankees fans? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, like, at what point did your parents go wrong? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's see. Best post-game meal? Uh, PB&J. Really? Okay. <laughs> Steak. There you steak. Go. Uh, best baseball movie ever. Uh, rookie of the Year, Sandlot. I really like Moneyball. Okay. And, and you're talking about Rookie of the Year with the broken arm. Yes, sir. Henry Rowan Gardner. Yes, sir. Very good. Uh, best MLB uniform ever. I would say the San Diego uh, City Connects. Really? The bright? The bright colors. Okay. It just stands out. It's not a normal thing that you see. Sure. I like the St. Louis Cardinals uh, baby blues. Uniforms. All right, those are all good. Very good. Awesome. Um, all right, so what is, for 2024, what is a personal goal for each of you, if not more than one? Uh, my personal goal is to, like, leave with under a one ERA. A one or under, better. Okay. Personal goal would be uh, keep my batting average up, no, on-base percentage up all year. Okay. Uh, what about team goals? Is there something that you guys – do you guys have, like – Something that you guys talk about all the time um, or a motto that you guys keep? Uh, this year we started Be a Dog. Yep. Okay. And yep. what is the team goal? The team goal is to win state. Win state, get there. Okay. 
Very cool. So tell me about like the team dynamic this year. Obviously, last year you guys had a solid squad. The year before that, winning state, um, you guys were both like a part of the program for both of those years. Um, what does it look like this year in terms of like what the dugouts like? How's how are how's the chemistry amongst each other? Um, it's pretty good. Just last year to this year, it changed a lot because me and D we played with the guys last year pretty much our whole lives. Mm. So going into this year, it's it's the same, but it's different. Sure. Yep. Okay. Still, still continuing to build a bond this year with the guys. We uh, we still trust each other one that we had this year, and it's been amazing so far. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So another question that I have for you guys, it's different for every baseball player. You guys play very different positions. Um, what is the best feeling in baseball um, as a pitcher? Popping your first nine. Okay. Getting in 90. Okay. And when did you do that? I hit it the first tournament this summer. Really? Okay. And how'd you, who, like, how'd you find that out? Because was it on the scoreboard? Uh, Tim Campos. Okay. Very cool. Awesome. And did you, did you know when it came out of your hand, like, I think it, I got it? Or? It felt different because, like, usually you could feel like, oh, like, this hit that. Um, but that throw, it just felt way different. It felt good. And you could hear by the pop of the glove. Sure. Okay. And D, what about you? For catching? Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. What is the best feeling as a catcher? Like, what is a... Definitely throwing throwing someone out or back picking someone in a tight ball game. Mm, and okay. then back pick when it's unexpected and we really need the out. And just hearing the crowd, like, go crazy after a back pick or throw out. It's awesome. How do you feel about, like, um, the the, what do you call it? The pregame pop up to home plate is that pressure? Everybody's watching you, the last one on the field. <laughs> uh, I would say I used to be very nervous for it, but now I just don't think about it and just catch a pop fly. Just making so, it happen. Making it happen. Very cool. Um, all right. So, what is something that you guys uh, just look forward to each and every game when you uh, put on your uniform, you get to the field? Like, what is something that you guys look forward to that you feel like you're gonna miss um, after your senior year? Running out to center and jumping and hitting the wall. Definitely. Definitely running out there and then saying our team prayer in the middle and just getting pumped up in a circle before the game and then mm. doing our stretches. It's just awesome. Is there any other, like, rituals or um, superstitions that you guys have that – because I remember some guys would, hey, I'm the last one. I have to be the last one to touch the center field sign. Or, you know, I, like you guys said, Nick Sandate has got to be the one to put stuff on. What, do you guys have anything else that you guys – this has to be done this way. In the prayer circle, we're all in the same order every oh, yeah. game. Okay. Very cool. Is that mostly the one? Mostly, yeah. yeah. Mostly, yeah. Very cool. Are you guys doing any types of team dinners or? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, okay. The first one was the same one that we had every year. The uh, Shane Andrew, at, Shane Andrews. at Shane Andrews' house. Oh, okay. And then now we're just doing it. We're just pick up houses just throughout yeah. the team. We just have a team dinner at each guy's house. Oh, throughout the year? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's been it's been nice. Those are also the good memories. Yeah. Team dinners and spending time with them, making jokes. When you guys went to Shane's house, did he did they show highlights? <laughs> no. No, they didn't show highlights? No, okay. Sir. No, we just played no. a bunch of cornhole. Okay, cool. Who's the champ? Aiden and Garrett. Yeah, Aiden and Garrett. <laughs> Aiden and Garrett cool. are good. All right, guys. Appreciate you guys for being on the show. Um, I wish you guys the very best of luck going forward. I look forward to watching you guys. Absolutely. Thank yes, you. Sir, thank you. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the All Sports Best podcast uh, sponsored by the Lucky Bull Grill. Uh, open Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Thank you.